Hello everyone, Jeff the Green Review here. Plants use many nutrients to create the chemicals they need for all of the processes that are happening in a plant. Fertilizers can supply plants and microbes with a few chemical nutrients. A fertilizer is called complete when it has the three primary nutrients. It may or may not have any secondary or micronutrients. The sources for the ingredients may be organic or inorganic. The nutrients may be slow to release or become available to the plant, or they may be quickly available. Some fertilizers are mixed with pesticides to kill weeds or insects. All three primary nutrients are always listed in the same order on all packages. It is nitrogen N, then phosphorus P, and potassium K. Each fertilizer has an analysis listed as the percentage by weight of the nutrients available. The analysis is occasionally listed in parts per million for liquid fertilizers. A 50 pound bag of 10520 fertilizer will have 5 pounds of N, 2.5 pounds of P, and 10 pounds of K for a total of 17.5 pounds of fertilizer. The remaining weight of 32.5 pounds is inert filler material that helps spread the fertilizer and possibly some secondary or micronutrients. The proper time to fertilize is, is before a plant needs it so that a lack of nutrients does not limit growth by moving plants from the thrive range to the survive range. Plants have growth spurts at different times of year and need different nutrients at different times. Trees, shrubs, and perennials may start growing roots a month before the top sends out leaves and again in the fall after leaves have fallen off. The best way to get nutrients into the soil is by adding organic matter. That breaks down slowly and supplies nutrients over a whole growing season. Fertilizers are best applied by working them into the soil rather than spreading them on top. The proper amount of fertilizer to use depends on the results of a soil test. Without one, you're just guessing on how much to add. Very few people will have their soil tested by a laboratory and homeowner soil test kits are notoriously inaccurate. Most garden soils have plenty of phosphorus, making it unnecessary to add more in a fertilizer to flower beds, lawns, and vegetable gardens. Container soil may be lacking in nutrients and the plants may be helped with the addition of fertilizer. Always follow the label directions and never add more than what the package says. It is okay, especially on house plants, to follow the weekly, weekly rule of using a fourth of the amount of the, pa the package indicates on a more frequent basis. Inorganic fertilizers may or may not be naturally occurring. Inorganic simply means they are not carbon-based. Examples include ammonium nitrate and ammonium sulfate. Inorganic fertilizers tend to be inexpensive, quickly release into the soil, but not always. They're typically made of chemical salts that can harm soil organisms. Factory production of inorganic require a lot of natural gas. Organic fertilizers come from living organisms or their byproducts. Besides the slow release of nutrients, they promote the growth of soil organisms and help to improve the soil texture. The slow release can be an advantage as they are less likely to damage roots. But it can be a disadvantage if the plants are deficient and need nutrients quickly. They tend to be more expensive and relatively low in nutrients per volume. Some sewage sludge could have heavy metals. Fresh manure could have high salt content or have deadly E. coli bacteria. So never use it near vegetable gardens. Compost made from the existing plants in the landscape is the cheapest organic fertilizer and completely safe. Fast release fertilizers are useful if a plant is exhibiting symptoms of nutrient deficiency. A quick acting fertilizer can be useful. They tend to be the least expensive, but they have to be applied more often. They have the potential to burn the roots of the plants, and since they are easily moved into the plant, they can burn the edges of plant leaves. They also wash away easily. They can be a cause of pollution when they wash into wetlands. Slow release fertilizers feed the plant by feeding the microorganisms in the soil, creating a better environment for the roots and increasing overall plant health. They tend to cost more, but they require fewer applications. They're safe for plant roots and they don't wash into wetlands easily. Before tilling a vegetable garden, add several inches of compost and one and a half pounds of 10-10-10 fertilizer per 10 by 10 foot area and till them both into the top 10 inches of soil. Do not use a fertilizer that already has herbicides or insecticides in it.
Do not add lime, gypsum, or sulfur without a soil test showing a need for them. Add fertilizer in a vegetable garden just before digging deeply in the garden soil. Again, just before planting and working into the top four to six inches of soil. Fertilizers with nitrogen can be applied at planting time. Side dress nitrogen later in the season for long season crops. The extension offices at research universities across the country regularly state that lawn fertilizer may not need any phosphorus and only when a soil test shows a need. Potassium should also be very low unless a soil test shows a need. The recommendations for nitrogen is usually for a maximum of 4 pounds per 1,000 square feet per year and no more than 1 pound per 1,000 square feet during any application. It is often best that at least 70% of the nitrogen be in slow release forms. Leaving lawn clippings on the lawn can equal a half pound of nitrogen per fertilizer application. The highest quality lawn is not necessarily the darkest green or most of it are rapidly growing, but does have acceptable color and density without excessive growth. Excess nitrogen application can lead to a dark green grass growing at excessive rates, requiring more frequent mowing and possibly resulting in contamination of the groundwater with nitrate nitrogen. Warm season grasses receive their nitrogen during the summer when they're actively growing. Low maintenance areas receive one application in the early summer. Higher maintenance lawns that are not regularly watered are fertilizers, fertilized twice or three times every other month. High maintenance lawns that re are used a lot and watered often can receive fertilizer monthly during the growing season. Cool season grasses are fertilized when they are going through cool seasons. Low maintenance lawns get one application in September. Medium maintenance lawns get September, November, and May applications. High maintenance lawns that are irrigated during the summer receive September, November, May applications and a half rate application in June. Summer applications of fertilizer in cool season grass lawns in the north mainly feed crabgrass and other weeds since the cool season grass is already dormant. Fertilize flower beds prior to tilling and planting annual beds. For perennials, add P and K in spring as growth resumes. Fertilize trees, ornamental trees, or shrubs late fall or early spring. Almost all feeder roots on trees are in the top six to eight inches of soil. Deep root feeding below that depth misses the roots and pollutes the soil. So what's this mean to me? In nature, Live and dead stuff constantly recirculate through each other. The biggest trees and the smallest bacteria depend on each other. It is too simplistic to call this a circle of life. It is a much more tangled web of life. Researchers are constantly finding new relationships between seemingly unrelated organisms. The more relationships we can add to our landscape, the stronger our landscape's web of life, and the healthier each component will be. The strongest interactions of diversity are in the soil where dead plant and animal material quickly decompose. Another what's this mean to me? Composted materials that slowly break down are the best fertilizer for flower beds, lawns, and trees. They support the whole ecosystem of microorganisms that break down the material in, into nutrients that the plants can use. Compost helps create a better soil that moves plants up into the thrive range. Inorganic, quick-release fertilizers often poison the microbes and damage the ecosystem, moving plants out of the Thrive range. These two fertilizer labels may look a lot alike, but they're for different purposes. The rose plant food analysis of 1824-16 promotes flowering and fruiting, making it appropriate for plants that you want to bear flowers or fruit. The all-purpose plant food analysis of 24-8-16 promotes leaf growth, so it's good for lawns, trees, house plants, and leafy vegetables like lettuce. Both fertilizers have different amounts of secondary nutrients. In other words, what's this mean to me? Factory production of inorganic fertilizer uses a lot of natural gas. Most people don't consider the environmental cost of production when a bag of cheap fertilizer is purchased. Organic products are often harvested from natural ecosystems that may be harmed. Harvesting of bat guano, kelp, peat moss, and seaweed have all come under scrutiny for unsustainable harvesting. The peat moss industry is doing better, but compost, pine needles, and wood chips that are locally sourced may be better. In other words, this mean to me, if you mixed a five pound bag of each of these two fertilizer bags, what analysis would be the new fertilizer? Would it be a 42, 32, 32? No, 
That can't happen since each number in a is a percentage of the whole, and 42-32-32 is 106 percent. Since we added equal amounts of two fertilizers, we can just divide each of the nutrients numbers by two and get the average for each component in the mix. The new mixed fertilizer would have a ratio of 21-16-16. If we added unequal amounts of the different fertilizers, then the percentages would be much more difficult to figure out. And this is Jeff with the Greener View. Thanks for watching.